seems like it's life or not. Yeah. Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to this live stream. Ellie is here, and today we will talk about Russia during the Soviet Union times versus now. Apparently, I'm not going to be speaking from my personal experience because I was born after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. By the way, who knows when the Soviet Union collapsed? Let me know in the comments and I will check your knowledge of history and connection and I will, uh, will be able to see if you can hear what I ask and if you can see and hear me well. So, when has the Soviet Union collapsed? Or when do you think it collapsed? Someone knows that? Okay, I'm getting some answers now. It means that everything is good with the connection and we're ready to start. So today we have quite an unusual topic, but many of you might not know how life was like in Russia during the Soviet Union, or some of you don't know what countries were included there, or how Russia changed after the dissolution of the Soviet Union. So today we'll discuss all those topics. And uh, I'm not going to be making this stream alone. Uh, this stream will be held with my friend and also a teacher from our Russian speaking club, Alena, and actually she is already here. Uh, she is helping me to set up the stream. She will be coming here later. Here is our plan for today's life. So at first we will talk about the history of the USSR. For those who don't know much or don't know anything about the USSR, how life was there, why it collapsed, and differences in between Russia and the USSR, etc. We will compare it. And then for the third part, Alena, the teacher from the Russian Speaking Club, will join us and she will talk about the differences in the Russian language and some slang phrases of the Soviet Union time and some stereotypical phrases that foreigners use for jokes. We will start with the history and, as I said, this is not going to be based on my personal experience because I was born in the Russian Federation, not in the Soviet Union. But I've talked to many adults and also my grandparents about their life in the Soviet Union. Also, we learned a lot at our schools about the Soviet Union. I've uh, I've been studying history since the 5th grade till the 11th grade of school. And as you may already know, in Russia, every pupil, like every student at school, has to follow the same syllabus. So we are not able to use, to choose the subjects as in American schools, for example, where you can drop subjects, where you can choose the subjects that you want to attend. In Russia, we have to follow all the subjects. So I studied history for seven years at school, one year in a university, because when you're a freshman, and it doesn't matter which major, you can study biology, you can study medicine, you can study engineering or marketing anyways. At the first year, you will have to study history, philosophy, and all the subjects that are compulsory. So I've studied history a lot as well. Probably if I was able to choose subjects, like in American schools, for example, or probably in some countries, the system also works like you can choose the subjects. I would probably choose languages. But as I, wa I wasn't able to choose the subject, I studied a lot of history. But now I don't regret it, so this talk will be based on some knowledge from Russian high school and university history classes, Russian history books, and uh, some conversations that I've had to 
people who lived during the Soviet times. So uh, let's start. I've already seen that there were some correct answers in the chat. Uh, some of you, it means that some of you already know some history about the Soviet Union or at least about its dissolution. So, in December the 8th, in 1991, the picture of the world dramatically changed because one of the world's superpowers of that time, of the 20th century, ceased to exist. The communist giant, the USSR, or the Union of the Soviet Socialist Republics, disappeared from the world's map. It was a huge event for all the countries, especially for Russia, of course. So in late 1991, the leaders of three of the Soviet Union's uh, foundings and largest republics, the Russian SFSR, it was called also the Ukrainian and Belarusian SSR, declared that the Soviet Union doesn't exist anymore. And other republics also joined this decision. And on, in this picture, you can see how this uh, decree was signed. Uh, so they just declared the end of the Soviet Union, one of the world's superpowers. It was like a huge event. So this is actually how the Soviet Union looked in its final years. So it consisted not of countries, uh, but of socialist republics. It was the union of the socialist republics. Oh my gosh, I feel like I'm... A history professor or something. <laughs> um, so those were Armenia, Azerbaijan, Belarus, uh, now Belarus, yeah, Estonia, Georgia, Kazakhstan, Kyrgyzia, now Kyrgyzstan, uh, Latvia, Lithuania, Moldavia, uh, now Moldova, Russia, Tajikistan, Turkmenistan, Ukraine, and Uzbekistan. The capital of the USSR was Moscow. Uh, then and now it remained the capital of Russia. By the way, let me know in the comments what you were taught at schools about the Soviet Union. Uh, because sometimes I think the history is represented and taught differently in different countries. Because I know that in America they learn a completely different history of the World War II. In Russia, it's also very different. That is why sometimes people have these arguments. And when I was talking to some Americans or even Europeans uh, about the World War II, we realized that it was taught completely differently in our schools, high schools or universities. So I'm curious what you were told about the Soviet Union at uh, history classes or maybe overall in your country. What do you know about the Soviet Union? Um, what is it famous for in your country? So, on the day of the termination of the existence of the USSR, its leaders established, you probably know this, CIS, which is the Commonwealth of Independent States. And Georgia was the only former republic that didn't participate in the meeting in Alma-Ata, the capital of Kazakhstan, the previous capital. Now it's Astana, no, now it's Nur Sultan, the previous Astana. You probably know that the capital has changed all the time in Kazakhstan or it was re renamed many times. So in Alma-Ata, uh, on De December in 1991, while Lithuania, Latvia and Estonia refused to do so according to their governments, and the Baltic states were illegally inco incorporated into the USSR in 1940. So during the existence uh, of the Soviet Union, what did it look like? It was by area the world's largest country. You, you can just imagine Russia, 
plus 14 other existing countries now, uh, republics of that time. So it was like enormous. Um, and it was also one of the most diverse with more than 100 distinct nationalities living within its borders. And the majority of the population was made of East Slavs. Those were Russians, Ukrainians, and Belarusians. So these groups lived together and they made up more than two-thirds of the total population in the late 1980s. But of course, there were more nationalities than these ones, but this one, uh, these ones were the main. The Soviet Union was the successor to the Russian Empire of the Tsars and was formed following the civil war in 1921 as the world's first Marxist communist state in the world. And after that, it would become one of the biggest and most let's say, powerful and influential uh, nations in the world. However, as you already know, the Soviet experience began in 1917 and it ended in failure because they had these great plans of creating the world's superpower and so many economic plans and of like implementing so many projects which would improve the life of people, but this experiment uh, ended in failure because the high moral goals uh, it had set uh, were never realized. And indeed, the countless crimes and dictatorship was settled. And during that time, there were the revolutions and also the gulag camps so it was the opposite of what they were planning actually and when the democracy uh, triumphs communism has to deport the stage so economic failure was the key reason for the ussr ussr's collapse and the socialist alternative to the market economy turned out to be just an illusion and the Soviet Union collapsed. And it is funny that when I talk to some, usually Americans, I would say, I think that Americans hate to be stereotyped for not knowing the geography or history well, but sometimes it's mm, it happens. Uh, because when I was talking to some Americans and I told them that I'm from Russia, they asked me, uh, so it's the same place as the USSR? So I was shocked that some of them thought that the USSR still exists. Or some of them were asking me, is Russia and USSR the same country? And I was like, no, I'm from Russia, the USSR was a different country. And they asked me, okay, but where is USSR located? And I, I was like, it doesn't exist, come on. But uh, that was like really weird for me. Mm. So can you text in the chat if you've also encountered such situations, probably with some people from other countries mm, where they didn't know like much about your country or maybe about the Soviet Union as well because <laughs> it was so weird for me every country I go there are Americans even in Odessa um, we're so globalized now I think anywhere I go there are Russians I went to this really remote place in Indonesia and I was in a like deserted beach there were no people and I was walking somewhere in Indonesia and I heard someone speaking Russian like Marina давай иди сюда I was like whoa thank you so much David education is the sixth 
60s in the 60s was all about the Cold War and the space race. You would be a great teacher, very interesting subject. <laughs> Thank you so much. I was, I actually worked as a teacher, but as a teacher of English language, not of the history, but this is really uh, an interesting topic to discuss, especially when I realized that very few people know much information about Russia or the Soviet Union, yeah, because they were asking me where the Soviet Union is. So they thought that I'm from Russia and Soviet Union is some separate country somewhere else. Or they were asking me, is it the same country? I was like, it doesn't exist, come on. So uh, now let's compare how Russia has changed since the Soviet Union times what Russia looks like now, what's common about Russia and Soviet Union, what has changed. So the basic difference between Russia and the Soviet Union is that Russia is an independent country, whereas the Soviet Union was a political state in which Russia was one of the republics. It was a union of socialist republics united by the same government and ideology, yeah? And Russia is just an independent country. That's just an obvious difference. Also, the ideology of the Communist Party of the Soviet Union was Marxism-Leninism, an ideology of a centralized command economy with uh, one party state to realize the dictatorship of the Proletariat, proletariat, is there such word in English? Pro, pro, proletariat, like um, Russian poli policymakers tried embracing capitalism, liberalism, and Western style democracy after 1991, but nowadays the country is back to antagonizing the West on ideological grounds. So, Moscow's backing of serious president or who the majority of Western countries firmly oppose is the latest, but not the only example of that. And a key difference is the ideology underpinning Russia's stance in the world. Communism has been actually traded for conservatism now. And there are many ex other examples where Russia supports some leaders of particular countries or where Russia admits some laws, but all the countries of the United Nations don't. And that is why Russia is still kind of not really in the good relationship with the West. Now. Another difference is the aspect, the economical aspect. The economy of the Soviet Union was based on state ownership of the means of production, collective farming and industrial manufacturing. And the highly centralized Soviet type econ economic planning was managed by the administrative command system. But Russia today is a capitalist economy uh, whereas still many people think that Russia is a communist country. Alona lived a long time in Brasilia, and I believe that you told me that Brazilians still think that Russians are communists, right? Yeah, she, she says yes, yes, <laughs> and laughs. Because that's what all the Brazilians told Alona. Like, can you tell us about how life is in, in communism? And she was like, what? Um, but now Russia is a capitalist country, which means that deeper integration in the globalized world and more personal freedom to work, to travel, to learn and to explore the world. Uh, so that's some stereotype or just lack of knowledge. I would say uh, that some people really 
think that Russia is still a communist country. Another difference is politics. So, in the Soviet times, there were no parties other than the one almighty communist party, and membership was a prerequisite for career advancement. Nowadays, well, there is uh, a party, political party, named Yedina Rossiya or United Russia, and it dominates the federal parliament. By the way, do you know who won the elections? Like, they were two, two weeks ago. Uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, so we had these elections as well. And I think that they won, actually, because in Russia, everyone knows who is going to win the elections before the elections. Uh, yes, uh, this party dominates the federal parliament and most local uh legislators and officials in the executive branch. So businessmen working with the state and even artists are sometimes uh, card-carrying party members. Uh, nowadays, though, political alternatives do exist. I believe there are more than 10 of them, like there are 12 or 14 political parties. But I know that it was funny uh, because one communist party was so popular this year. It was never popular, but this year in many regions of Russia, people voted for this communist party and even Russians who live abroad, but they voted in the embassies of Russia. I know that in Thailand, Russians uh, voted like mostly for this communist party. Everyone was so surprised. So political alternatives do exist including a modern communist one, although the real opposition faces major difficulties caused by president supporters. Uh, however, it's quite possible to make a career without any party affiliation. Then, another difference is about the policy of... Uh, religions, because the government of the Soviet Union followed an official, uh, an unofficial policy of state atheism, aiming to gradually eliminate religious belief within its borders. So they wanted to make it a union without any particular religion, while it never officially made um, religion illegal, the state nevertheless made great efforts to reduce the prevalence of religious belief within society. But today, uh, Russian Orthodoxy is the country's largest religious um, uh, de denomination, representing more than half of uh, the population and organized religion was repressed by Soviet authorities for most of the 20th century and uh, non-religious still constitute more than one-fourth of the population. And overall, I would say that Russia isn't that um, religious country and many people who are like or Orthodox Christians, they don't go to church uh, at all or that often, or probably they just go for Easter and Christmas. But overall, I haven't met many religious people in Russia, except the Caucasus region. My videos from Caucasus are coming soon, please, guys. Um, a little bit more patience and I will make videos from the Caucasus. I would say that Chechnya is one of the most religious regions of Russia. The main religion there is Sunnit, Mus Sunnit Muslim. Yes, I believe so. Now, Another difference is about the media. The Soviet media broadcasted um, only what officials wanted to, 
and access to foreign media was banned. And in the 2000s, one of Putin's first moves was to bring back under state control the leading television channels and Russians' main source of information. They have since turned into pro-government vehicles. Nevertheless, Russia has many independent small media outlets that offer alternative points of view. For example, we have this channel named Rain or Dost. So we have many channels and social medias which are independent of the, uh, of the government. And anyways, now because of the internet cable and the access to international print media, Russians can get their hands on any means of media from any part of the world. In the picture, you can see one of the TV news TV programs of the USSR. Also, the USSR actively intervened in personal life. Every Soviet citizen was embraced by the Komsomol, which was a political youth organization, trade unions, extracurricular activities, and formal gatherings. For family offenses, one could be punished in the service. Now, of course, things like that don't exist. The state doesn't interfere with your private life like the Soviet Union did. Uh, and I heard that during the Soviet Union, people always got this idea that you have to be careful in everything that you say. So people lived in like constant being constantly conscious of what they can say or of what they shouldn't be saying but now um, things like that i would say almost don't exist almost let's not idealize everything uh, about russia well, let's now see what happened after the dissolution of the Soviet Union and why some people miss those times. Now, you know, now it's common to idealize the Soviet Union because we Russians can hear so many times from our grandparents or just from some more adult people that they're saying oh i miss the soviet union times a lot the the life was so great i'm so nostalgic about that period of my life others though say that now it's much better so uh not only the elderly but also some young people talk about this no nostalgia even the young people which is quite surprising because they haven't lived during those times and I don't understand why they say so. I cannot say that I'm nostalgic for the Soviet Union. So uh, they, sa they say about this wonderful time which everyone treated with fear and respect as well where they were the world's best medicine, education, where everyone lived in prosperity and Everyone was confident in tomorrow. And in this picture, like on this slide, you can see a survey by the Levada Center, which reveals that at the end of 2017, so this survey was made just several years ago, the share of Russians who regret the collapse of the Soviet Union and who miss those times are 58%. So it's more than a half. And you can also see the percentages of the same survey made in different countries like Georgia, Ukraine, Kazakhstan, uh, etc. And still the percentage is quite high. Uh, the attitude towards the greatest um, geopolitical catastrophe, let's say so, differs sharply depending on the age as well. So if the generation is plus 55, plus 60, 
the vast majority regret the collapse of the Soviet Union. Otherwise, when you ask someone younger, aged from 18 to 25, maybe 27, who never lived in the USSR, the number of those who don't regret the collapse of the USSR outnumbers the amount of those who regret it. So, on one hand, idealized thoughts about the USSR are weakly correlated with facts. On the other hand, so much of the Soviet remains in modern Russia and all spheres from legislation and law enforcement to language and anecdotes that sometimes there is a feeling that the Soviet Union is still around us. Several days ago, though, I had a talk with my aunt and she was talking about the Soviet Union and, for example, she told me that she didn't like the Soviet Union and she is much happier now and she thinks that life in Russia is so much better now than during the Soviet Union. So, I will try to explain you why there are these opposite opinions. One, people are so nostalgic about the Soviet Union and others really almost hated those times. So my aunt is an entrepreneur and she likes when everything is in her own hands um, and when she can control her life, when she gets when she gets paid as much as uh, as much as she works and as much effort she puts and as much smart she is. And the idea of the Soviet Union was equality for everyone, the communism, etc. And it means that some people love those times because they would get everything for free, education, medicine, uh, etc. And there were even free uh, things like in the supermarkets, for example, people could get a box of food or even the clothes, etc. But you would have to stand in a line to get those things for such a long time. So the Soviet Union is actually um, known for these huge lines everywhere. You would have to stand in a line to buy oil, to buy bread, to buy new shoes. There were lines everywhere. On the one hand, you could get a lot of free stuff. On the other hand, the life really didn't depend on you. Like, if you wanted to live a better life and you worked harder than others, but you would make the same money as those who work less, for example. So, for example, my aunt, she didn't like those times because she's an entrepreneur and she wanted to improve her life and not to get free stuff and this equality. And also she told me that she hated those lines because you had... She told me that she could uh, go outside, take a line for oil, then go somewhere and take a line for buying shoes and then go to other place and for the whole day she would be just walking from one line to another line and if you want to get some stuff you have to be in those lines. So she told me that it was crazy and that now she likes it much better because you are free and you can make as much money as you want and everything just depends on your efforts and your talent. Now let's talk a bit about the countries of the former Soviet Union because there is actually there are many things that unite all of them. Once we were all one country, the USSR, but now there is Russia and 14 other countries, but there is still something that unites all of them because because they were once one country. So, the first thing that unites 
the countries of the former Soviet Union is that most people in all of those countries speak Russian as it was the first official language of the USSR. And while younger generations might not be so fluent in Russian, but most, mostly all the elder people speak fluent Russian. And for example, if you go to Georgia, probably some young people will not be that good in Russian, but elder people will all speak Russian because during the USSR it was the official language. But overall, if you go to the countries of the former Soviet Union, expect, like, oh, <laughs> I thought that I'm going to drop my camera. Um, it's fine, it's fine. And you, if you go to the countries of the former Soviet Union, you can expect that the majority of people will speak Russian. If you go to Ukraine, they're going to understand Russian. The problem for Russians is that they will go to the to Ukraine and they will not have problems because everyone will speak Russian, but Russians don't understand the Ukrainian language, for example. But Ukrainians will understand and speak Russian. You go to Kazakhstan, for example. Russians are not able to understand the Kazakh language, but um, all the Kazakh people, they will speak Russian. So I think that's pretty impressive for all the countries of the former Soviet Union that they all speak at least two languages, Georgian and Russian, or Ukrainian and Russian, Kazakh and Russian, etc. So if you speak Russian and you go to Ukraine, to Belarus, to... Uzbekistan to Kazakhstan. You will be good with Russian only and you don't have to learn uh, one more language. I mean, you can, uh, but if you only speak Russian, you will be good. Also, we all united by New Year celebrations. The Soviet Union made a great contribution into the traditions of New Year celebration, including New Year deli uh, de like de food, decorations, habits, activities, and many people in the post-Soviet countries still follow these habits. I actually have a vlog about celebrating a New Year, which I recorded last winter, and in my vlog you can see how basically all the people from the former Soviet Union and from Russia celebrate the New Year. It's all the same for all the Slavic people, I would say. And it's so typical and I think it's a bit funny, but it's a tradition which we do every single year. In my vlog, you can, you can see that we watch the same movie, we cook the same things, we watch the president's speech at midnight and many more traditions. So the Soviet, the countries of the former Soviet unions also do that. Also, we have this habit of not throwing things away. The Soviet people thought that if I throw it away, where will I get it later? Because it was very difficult to get any stuff, as I told you. Mm, you have to wait in a line for a really long time, and then probably you were in a line, but while you were standing there, that thing already was sold out. So it was so difficult to get any stuff during the Soviet Union. And people didn't throw anything away, but this habit is still with us. And Russians usually don't throw away things. They think, I'm probably, I'm gonna need it later, and they put it on their balcony, for example. So our balcony is always full of a lot of, usually unnecessary, and some stuff that we're never gonna need, but we just don't throw it away, because... We think that it's wasting things or something like that. Uh, that's quite a habit for all the countries of the former Soviet Union as well. 
Also, another thing that unites those countries is Dacha. Uh, that's a kind of a country house outside of a city where Russians always go for weekends and where they grow their vegetables. And it's normal for Russians to have a house in the city and also to have a dacha in the countryside. It's like some it's like a tradition, it's like a habit. And many foreigners ask me, you Russians are so rich, you have a house in the city, and then you also have this private house um, in the village or nearby the city. But it's not considered something luxurious here. It's like a tradition that Russians have a dacha where they go to, where they get rest from the city, where they grow vegetables. And that habit remained in the countries of the Soviet Union as well. Also, it's the habit of drinking tea, of course. In any country of the former Soviet Union you go to, the first thing that you're going to hear when you enter the house will be, do you want to drink some tea? Let's go to drink some tea. And we probably drink it for so many times a day, like maybe five, six, seven times. And for example, when I come to my parents' house or grandparents, it seems to me that all day long you're just drinking tea because you you drink tea after a meal and then she's my grandmother would be like oh let's just have some tea before lunch um and to have some snack and then you drink tea after lunch and then you drink tea during the lunch during then after then be before dinner during dinner so it's so many times a day and when you visit your Russian friend, um, I'm gonna guess like that for 90, 100% she's gonna or he's gonna offer you to drink tea. By the way, it's a nice habit as well that you all, when you're a guest, you always bring something small. We call it for tea. Like you take some small chocolate, candies, and when you're a guest, you always bring something small and you say that this is for tea. Uh, and then you might eat it together when you have tea. It's also a habit uh, that unites all the countries of the former Soviet Union. By the way, what about your country? Do you also drink like much tea? And what happens when you're a guest? Do you also have kind of traditions like that? I see a question here. So it's usually black tea, but sometimes it's green tea, it doesn't matter. But usually the black tea. Okay, uh, I will answer your questions about the Soviet Union later again. But now um, the teacher from the Russian speaking club will join us like in two minutes. Let me tell you about the Russian speaking club that we organized because the fourth group has finished like several days ago. I held, uh, I organized the Russian speaking club since this March, I think, and we already had like four graduations and it was so cool and I'm inspired by reading the reviews and comments of our students. It's just amazing to enter our chat in the Russian speaking club where our students learn Russian. And at first I was really surprised that people from all over the world want to learn Russian because it's popular to learn English, it's popular to learn French, German, etc. But I was surprised that so many people are also interested in learning Russian. And we have students from all over the world, like the UK, the US, Germany, France, etc. And even we see people from Singapore, 
Papua New Guinea or Samoa Islands. And at first I was like, why do you even need Russian? But it's so cool that when I enter our chat and everyone is put so much effort to learn Russian and they are so genuinely interested in the Russian language and Russian culture. So in our speaking club, as in the left of this slide, you can see our chat. And in our chat, the teacher sends all of the materials and vocabulary where we learn it all together and we discuss different interesting topics. And on the right, it's our speaking session, which we have every weekend. So during the week, you learn the vocabulary and then on weekends, you put everything into practice. And also during the week, you practice with saying, like recording the voice and video messages in our group, group chat or directly to the teacher, Alona. And for me, it's so cool to listen to these messages and to watch the videos that our students record because I really like to share the Russian culture and it's so nice to see this interest in the language and culture. Now we have three groups. You can start from zero if you've never learned Russian also for elementary and pre-intermediate and it's organized in like a form of a game so that you're always motivated to keep up with the group uh, with other members of the chat and we make it like a game we have this matryoshka lifesaver so it's gonna be a lot of fun and i'm gonna leave the link to the Russian speaking club in the description of this video and I think that you can actually already see it now so you if you want to join us you can go to the link and this secret code LE10 is only for those who watch this stream and you will get a discount for our Russian speaking club and I will be so happy to see any of you because it's really mesmerizing for me to enter our chats or speaking sessions and to see how people from all over the world learn Russian. For, for example, here you can see some reviews of our students and they're like from uh, completely different parts of the, of the world, Brazil, Indonesia, Canada, the US. So our chat is always super international and it will be a lot of fun. And now um, we will talk about the language of the Soviet Union and what has changed. Alena can finally enter the room. Teacher Alena, <laughs> teacher Alena <laughs> is here. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, hello, guys. My name is Alena, and today we will talk a little bit about uh, Russia and USAR uh, nowadays because it's a little bit complicated uh, because. It's uh, uh, really, imp uh, really impressive how the time sometimes can be different because uh, we can speak and talk about uh, some myth or some other kind of uh, stereotypes about the country, but uh, it's really important sometimes to understand uh, like uh, what happened really right now in the country. So today we will discuss a little bit about USSR and Russia. And uh, please let me know, uh, do you think like Russian uh, speak now as a USSR or maybe change something? Uh, let me know what do you think about this? Because uh, yes, you can think that like USSR and Russia, it's like the same thing. But uh, it's already past 30 years and history has changed, so uh, it's a little bit different thing. Okay, so guys, today we will talk about some really uh, like important and interesting thing. So the first thing is uh, that everybody just uh, like believes that until today we talk Tavarish and Komrad, like Tavarish Elina Kadien. Even in our group chat, in the Russian speaking club, some people 
who always try to learn Russian, they text Привет, товарищи. Yeah. And we're like, why? Uh, how <laughs> no idea. one uses this now. Yeah, you know, it's it's like you know you uh, uh, wake up and you make it. I don't know for girls it would be more easy. Like you wake up and your eyebrow is really thin, and now you wake up and your eyebrow is really like this. So it's the same thing. So tavarish and comrade, it's already that. I am sorry for breaking your hearts. But... If you use this word tavarish or you've heard about it, let let us know in the comments. Yeah, just l let us know if you ever listen about this. <laughs> I believe you you did, uh, but uh, I maybe will broken your heart. But tavarish does not exist anymore as a comrade. Yeah, in the past it was popular, but now you can think only you know like a really joke or maybe you know uh, ironic think like. Tavarish. What do you think about this? No, but really, in when you want to exaggerate some situation and you say Tavarish, it's like a joke, but no one uses it. Like, if you see a friend, you will never say Привет, Tavarish. <laughs> if, if someone uh, uh, spoke you this, it's definitely 5 a.m. and you're in the bar drinking the next vodka. So. Okay, so guys, uh, the most important and the most popular is the Gopnik. Gopnik, Gapata, and all this uh, style of uh, things that you know. Uh, so Gopnik, it's like a subculture that you can uh, heard from the one one or one interesting uh, maybe you could find it in YouTube maybe some movies or I don't know some crazy jokes let me know where did you find information about Gopnik uh, maybe you find it in some YouTube channel or maybe it was some uh, history I don't know uh, I can tell you about Gopnik like just a little bit story that Gopnik was born in uh, St. Petersburg uh, like it was 1920, and it happened because we had proletariat. Proletariat is like kind of worker class, the people who was working. And it was in a time when uh, people moved from small city to the big city for opportunity of work. And uh, like a normal life, uh, people who used to live in a small city, like in a village, they didn't have opportunity to have education, so they are not education, uh, have some habit that they was uh, like adapted in that small city, and they came to the big city as a St. Petersburg, and they start live in a small dorm dormitory, uh, that's why it's called GOP. GOP, it's like GE, it's a statement of government, uh, dormitory for pro proletariat. So it's like abbreviature, it's called GOP. Uh, and they just add Nick and Gopnik, it's a board. Uh, so who is a Gopnik? Uh, Gopnik, <laughs> it's like a gangster, it's like a social gangster in St. Petersburg early 1920s. So it was a person who didn't have much education. Uh, sometimes they make a gop stop. So gop stop is something like, like uh, do you have a cigarette? Ah, you don't. So they bite you, they take everything that you have. Maybe they steal uh, something uh, like, for example, some part of your car, maybe wheel, or maybe uh, the audio system, or any kind of thing that uh, they can take. So that time was really popular and also um, the system of USSR was really strong but even system of USSR can't break them so they were so strong subculture that uh, there was like a gangster real gangster that even uh, USSR can't uh, break them and Gopniks are the ones who are famous for the slap squad right yeah I believe I don't know someone I'm asking us to do the slap squad <laughs> <laughs> we can, we can do it. <laughs> let, let me know if we need one more person for our love squad or two weeks from now. I don't, I don't know. Okay, so the Gopnik was born, and uh, Gopnik, uh, it was the person who, like, where I did that, they was like a gangster, they had some criminal roots, uh, and they start spread. So, instead of non-education person from small village, they became a real gangster who had some, um, some connection with, uh, uh, like, some, uh, like, 
I don't know, some bad people who had criminal future. So uh, everybody who didn't have the hair, uh, who had a tattoo, because it was really crazy to have to tattoo in USSR, but they're like really cool guys who was a half tattoo. So these uh, guys, they became uh, like um, the criminal elements in society. Yeah, and it was really cool to be a gopnik because you are like a real gangster or going you know, like in uh, places, you take the mobile phone, you can do it wherever you want, but everything changed. How it's now we have them in the TV comedies or in some stand up comedies where go these gopniks are always in the Adidas yeah. uh, sportswear, they're always. With the chotki, uh, yes, uh, or with the keys, like yeah. yes, I like to do this. Or kind with of the stuff. keys from the car, like this, <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> and they're always eating the sunflower seeds, yeah, with the bottle of beer, and they're always speaking Russian really weirdly and with many mm, like bad words, and they're like these cool guys who everyone is scared of. Yeah. So, uh, two reasons uh, why Gopnik has that. Guys, sorry, second time I've broken your heart, but Gopnik that. Uh, the first reason was because uh, um, between Gopniks was really uh, common to use drugs. And drugs in the 1930, I believe, uh, like 1990, it was really heavy drugs and I believe not so good quality. I don't know, uh, let me know if uh, we have someone from Amsterdam, maybe you know something <laughs> about this. <laughs> we, we can't talk, but you can talk in the comments. Uh, so. Uh, the first, first reason why Gopnik dead, because they are literally dead. Uh, like 10 years using, uh, like 1990 was the most time of the Gopniks, so it was time of them. Uh, when they use drugs, a lot of alcohol, vodka, uh, smoking, so uh, they don't have so long life. So they are dead, like literally dead. So in 2000, it was already half of Gopnik because of drug. Other half of Gopnik was killed by Putin. So that's why it's really weird when I get the comments or some suggestions on my YouTube or Instagram, like, Ellie, go and make a video with a Gopnik. Ellie, go and talk to some Gopnik or Gopnitsa. And I'm like, why? Mm -hmm. Why people are interested in this? And why do they think that it exists now? And where do everyone learn this from? Like, yeah. why everyone is so interested about Gopniks? Yeah, and I believe that Adidas uh, have to connect <laughs> with them because literally <laughs> they are spread the Adidas everywhere. I don't know why Adidas just not makes that collaboration. Uh, let me know if you know someone from Adidas that can work with them because it's really big, you know. But I, I was talking that um, Putin killed... Uh, Gopniks, uh, but not literally because uh, Putin had uh, some social reforms that uh, make the cut of vodka and uh, alcohol uh, problem in uh, Russia. So uh, alcohol became less popular. Also, Gopnik uh, became a uh, part of the subculture that was like jokes. So there was like memes in a. Uh, inside of society and they was not became real gangsters that everybody's fear or they are like really cool guys that want to break a system but there was already guys that uh, was not so popular everybody joke with them everyone just makes fun of them and as i mentioned just some comedy shows or in tv series where they're just these guys who are stupid who don't like they're without education and yeah stupid and strong <laughs> silly guys yeah so that's what, their image what what uh, was left it's just adidas i don't know why adidas didn't have collaboration <laughs> but uh only uh, uh, the, uh adidas has left for the gopnik of course nowadays you can find someone who has really strange uh strange um, 
uh, house behavior. For example, they go to airplanes, they scream, I don't want to use a mask, I don't want to use anything, I want a liberty. Or some people go to Turkey and they scream, drink a lot. So you can talk that this is a gapata, gapata ugovnik, the people non-education or people who don't have any sense of uh, good behavior. So it's not real gangster or something really cool that's like break the system, but it's some really strange guy. So instead of gopnik, you can use uh, some kind of the words. The first is ребята, ребята. Yeah, it's a, it's a one of the popular, like ребята, bar, pite vodka. Uh, I text everyone all the time. Ребята, привет, ребята. It's like, hey guys, привет, ребята. So you don't say gopnik. If you say gopnik, you have to talk only with people who wear Adidas. Uh, are you sure you're not sponsored by Adidas? Да, хорошо. Пацаны. Пацаны, it's one of the most popular, like, пацаны, пойдем на дискотеку. So, пацаны, it's using by village guys and uh, city guys, but it's really popular. Пацаны. Пацаны, sometimes you can say пацантре, uh, like in the way of Italian. И тип. Тип is like, oh, странный тип, like strange guy. Тип. Тип or типок. Да, посмотри. Что это за типок? The tip, типок, it's like some strange guy, like weird behavior, but it's not gopnik. Because gopnik is already uh, not mean anything. So gopnik has died, guys. So you can talk tip, типок, пацаны, ребята. But if you uh, just say gopnik, it means that you are uh, stuck in 1990, but today is 2021, I guess. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, guys. So, uh, we, do we have some questions about some interesting? A lot of questions about Gopniks. Oh, okay, guys, you got... Yes, Osar was flooded with Adidas clothes with former brand logo and Gopniks could afford Adidas finally. Probably they Adidas. couldn't afford it sometimes, so they would buy fake Adidas. And it's really funny because they have to somehow change the logo, right, in order to, um, like, avoid the loss, yeah. so it would be Adibas, Adibas yeah, or yeah. Ad, Ad, Adidas or something, yeah. like, they would make uh, purposefully a mistake so that Not they right don't there, copy right. the logo, they don't break the law, so they will be Adibas and people could literally wear this funny clothes, yeah. some Abibas. Yes. I, I even remember cool. this Abibas. Yeah, but I I guess until My now. friends wear it. <laughs> 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 yeah, so Adis Abeba, maybe something like this, who knows. Next mm -hmm. thing is KGB. KGB is like FBI, uh, like from Russia, is it like mm, KGB watching or something. Guys, KGB has <laughs> Да, но по-русски КГБ, mm -hmm. да, yeah, и в yeah. русском КГБ, but like in English KGB, КГБ uh, also has died. <laughs> yeah. I'm sorry. Some people texted me when I asked about their fears of traveling to Russia. They text, like, not one, but many people texted me that they're afraid of being followed by KGB or KGB punishing them for things they say, or KGB sending them to prison right uh, on the day when they arrive to Russia. Yeah. But KGB doesn't exist, guys. Yeah, so some Korean group of young boys can take uh, the new pop music uh, group, like KGB, like have BTS, can make <laughs> KGB, because KGB is uh, available now, um, and not exist anything under name of KGB. But we have other one that is called FSB. FSB is FBI. This is real guys of FBI. Uh, so FSB, uh, only when you can use it. You can use it, um, it's for girls, mm, guys, sorry. So if you see one guy, uh, for example, Elina, I like that guy, uh, look, but I don't know the name of him. I don't know anything. Give me a second. <laughs> Pass, like three times. His name is Sergey. He lives uh, in Metro Dinama. He like... Um, 
a sport football. But Elena, how you know this? You face bad. Yeah, like this we can do it, uh, like you FBI, because you know some extra information. Like, you know, the girls so that uh, every time watching for boyfriend, who he at on Instagram, where he put like, so this is face bad. Yeah, <laughs> in this kind of thing you can use, like, the face bashing. No, face bad. Uh, and also we have one more. Uh, I hope no one Russian policeman watching me because this is dangerous. <laughs> yes, we have as an as a word that's called мусор. Мусор literally means garbage. Мусор or мусора. Мусора is like a cops. Like for example, Elina, убери водку. Elina, hide the vodka. Мусора, мусота, мусора. Musara is mean like cops, but in a really bad way. I never yeah, told because Musa means garbage. Yeah, but that's how the police is called. Yeah, uh, it was in the past, but also until now it exists. So, uh, guys, KGB has died. Uh, face bear works, but if you're a girl who looking for the boyfriend uh, after in, in Instagram, uh, so if you have the girlfriend that follow you and every time know your <laughs> fingerprints and you're sleeping and she just push your button here for unlock your cell phone, she is face bear. For other kind of thing, we not use it. Um, next thing that is m um, most important today, everybody talk about politics. They have haters in the comment, the right, the left, straight. Guys, we are not from the left, from the right. We are just here uh, in a direction, in direct position. <laughs> yeah, because we have no idea about politics, not just because I'm blonde. Uh, just because Russians don't care about politics, really. If you go to Brazil, there is like, they fight, they fight. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so they are like, you can uh, you can listen, uh, they're called panelasu, where they take uh, something like uh, the pan and they do this with a spoon. <laughs> yeah, so they, uh, they have conflict, they fight with the neighborhood, like you support him, no, you support this, they put on the Facebook, who no, they support. Russia, I haven't even uh, seen even once a situation where two friends or family members would argue about politics. Yeah. We just, I guess we really don't care. Yeah. Uh, the one time when you can talk about Putin, it's uh, when you go to store and buy vodka, the name is Putin. <laughs> yeah, of course we have someone that like for, to talk, like, we have to change this country or something. But uh, when it's happened, it's called разговоры на кухне. Кухня, kitchen. Да. If someone notices French, I know that someone notices French. So now we're in the kitchen talking with you. Разговоры на кухне. О разговоры, it's talking, разговоры за жизнь. Жизнь is a uh, life. So when it's happened, so, if you have a party, like a Friday morning, not morning, night, so you're already drunk, a little bit drunk, or you just see that someone's there, just uh, dance, and you don't want to dance, what you do, you go into the kitchen to stay in some calm, silent place, and now you find someone who is here also, and then talk, Elina, mm -hmm. this life is so hard, I have to pay all these bills, and Elina could talk for me. Yeah, like, oh God, every day I pay for my light. You see, the cost of this light, it's just because of the stupid government and everything is under tequila. So believe me, no political of serious way. So it's разговоры на кухне, разговоры за жизнь. And the next thing about all this uh, kind of uh, politics, it's Putin, Rasputin. Lenin. Elina, do you know who is Rasputin? That was one of the revolutioners, I guess. Yeah, I don't know. Guys, let me know if you know who is Rasputin. Because I know Rasputin only for the last song of Majestic and Boniem, Rasputin, that maybe you know. It's I now. think it was during the Nicholas II. Yeah, uh, so it's really popular abroad talk about Rasputin, what he did. So guys, believe me, you know about Rasputin more than I that born here in this country and learn seven years history, pass national exam of history and <laughs> enter with national exam of history in university. And I don't know who is this guy because it 
not so popular. <laughs> we don't know. And the same about Putin. Yeah, now it's um, uh, a little bit um, dangerous moment because uh, we have a lot of change think and about our history, some conflict, some uh, thing uh, like uh, demonstration, but we not talk really about them or Lenin. Lenin also, uh, Lenin uh, not, not die, okay. Lenin near the Kremlin. If you want to visit him, take some tea for him. He is there, he stayed there was already a couple of decades. Yeah, he's still there. <laughs> he's still there, sleeping, waiting for you. In the center of Moscow. For free. For free. You don't need there that. Is a corpse. Yes, but you can't make a selfie. Have you visited? Yes, but yeah, I don't can. make a so selfie. No, you can't make pictures. Even st stop. Even stop. So not put high heels. It's hard to <laughs> yes. walk. Yes. yes. When you go inside the mausoleum. Yeah. Mausoleum. Uh -huh. Mausoleum. Yeah. I don't know this word. When you go inside the mausoleum of Lenin on the like nearby near the re red square, you go inside and you cannot stop at one place. Yeah. The there is the guard who tells you that you always have to walk like keep walking constantly. Yes, that Le Lenin like motion. That's the rule they have. Yes. So Le when you come here, I wouldn't say this is a place like must visit, yes. but if you would like to visit, yes. you will see this. If you like dead people, if you like <laughs> walking dead, <laughs> you can look it. No, but uh, uh, where I did this, uh, I mean, uh, shoes, it will be really comfortable to walk around the Lenin. But Lenin exists, exists in every city in they the... They say that Lenin was a Tartar. Tartar? Tartar? So? Tartar? Yes, I did. Yeah. Everyone confuses Tatar no. and Tartar, but no. I don't think he was Tartar. No, he's not. I don't know. Tatar, guys. Tartar is soul, please. Yes. And not. Or a dish made of uh, yes. raw meat. Mm -hmm. Yes. Or a sauce. Yes. And Tartar. Tatar is ethnic group. Yes, it's like talk uh, Swedish and sandwich. It's the same. So uh, n uh, now Lenin uh, actually in every city in uh, Russia. You cannot believe, but trust me, uh, we have the street of uh, Lenin and monument in the middle of the city in every city of uh, Russia. So there Lenin is uh, still alive, so if you want to make a picture with him, you can choose or dead Lenin or monument Lenin, uh, but uh, with a dead Lenin you can't make a selfie. I don't know, do you run marathons? Yes, I run. People say that you have too much energy. <laughs> ah, yes, so like, yeah, but... Do you run marathons? Yeah, she's always this energetic. Ah, yes, yeah, sorry. Even our students, they say that she replies constantly, like, you, they ask something and she replies. Yeah. Uh, all the time, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, the next thing uh, is what do you like is to drink. So, everybody saying на здоровье, на здоровье. It's not exist. Again. На здоровье I also made it as a joke in one of my recent videos. Um, and I said it because this is such a stereotypical phrase, which all the foreigners know, and they think that Russians use, use all the time. So I used it, but only as a joke, because на здоровье, we don't use it when we want to cheer. <laughs> no. So if you want to cheer, let's take our cheer. Here is, of course, vodka. Yes, yeah, you're drinking vodka, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> we sponsor it my vodka. If uh, we we don't vodka have snacks, Putin. Yes, we, we don't have snacks because in Russia we talk that all gra uh, like grouse that degrees like every all alcohol go to snacks. So do not waste your money to snack. Uh, yeah. Invest in a uh, vodka. Just straight vodka. Straight vodka. So we can say za любовь, за любовь, за любовь is mean for love. So we drink for love. За любовь, it's acceptable, and also за нас, за нас, for us, like we are drinking for us, for be happy. If you want to uh, drink for health, you can say за здоровье, but not на здоровье. 
Да, да. За нас. Вот за нас the best. So, за здоровье, uh, you can say. За здоровье. What does mean за здоровье? За здоровье is for health. Да? But it's better to say за ваше здоровье, like for your health. За ваше здоровье. За ваше здоровье. На здоровье. It means uh, you're welcome. Да, for example... Uh, I has arrived in a Elina house and I gave for her chocolate and say, Elina, шоколадка тебе. <laughs> Ты говоришь, спасибо. Да. Uh, she will say, спасибо. And I will say, на здоровье. So my chocolate, I bring for her my gift, like as a food. Uh, for she eat, be happy and be healthy. На здоровье, it means you are welcome. Что <laughs> случилось? Just literally one hour ago, a delivery man brought this to me, and it's a... It's not sponsored. Yeah. <laughs> it's a stabilizer for my camera and for my phone. And then he, now he texted in the chat, I brought you the stabilizer. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. We love you. We love you. Now, what is his name? Let's thank you, the delivery man. Oh, thank you. Let's take thank you, Samat. Samat, one love. Thank you so much. By the way, guys, uh, really, thank you a lot because during the last stream, I've got many um, like donations and help from you. So now I was able to bought a stabilizer and. I will be able to make better videos, so this is all thanks to you. Thank yes. you so much. Not sponsored. Now I will need to learn how to use this because you can see that it's in a box. I've never used it before. The delivery man just brought it to me and now he's he texts in this chat. <laughs> I was so surprised to say this. <laughs> yeah, so literally we target a lot of followers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh za zdarovye. It's when we drink. На здоровье, it's you're welcome. If you want to uh, just thank for someone and you want to wish for him the best, so you take на здоровье. Okay, next is uh, like the pain of my heart. <laughs> really, like pain from my heart. It's ski. Ruski, Amerikanski, Dievuski, uh, Pelmetski, Baranetski, Kremlovski, Putinski. Uh, guys, please, ski in Kurshavel, ski on holiday, but don't ski in Russian language. In, we don't have ski, okay? So, we have Americanets, Americanets, that mean American, we don't talk Americanski. We say Angliski, in the end, Angliski. Язык. We don't talk английский. Да? Мы говорим английский язык. So, we mean English language. Да? Русский. Русский. Not exist русский. Русский язык. Russian language. И русский. Итальянский. Да? So, we don't have ski anywhere. It's not exist. It just not exist. And just remember this, guys, please. Русские, девушки, нет, пожалуйста. Please. No, no, no. That's just a, no, no. Uh, you can find it. I know where you can find it. It's low, it's called low budget films. Yeah. So, uh, you can find it in a Spongebob that don't know translation. Fast and fusion uh, that uh, change the power and uh, energy. It, it have a lot of, uh, yeah, for example, with Arnold Schwarzenegger, uh, the movie, like old movie, old school movie. So there is like really, really bad Russians. It's like you know, it's like parody of Russian. So like Nazdarovye, Kokainu, even I don't know what is Kokainu, but it's really know. popular. Uh, Guys from Amsterdam, just be quiet. На здоровье кокаином, товарищ, товарищ, Борис, Дмитрий, Борис not exist. Борис, yes, Дмитрий, but Дмитрий, Борис, 
Olga, no. It exists if you if you watch yeah, such actually, movie. in any American movie, if there is a Russian, he's one always a bad guy. Two, he's always Boris. Always <laughs> star. Like we have. <laughs> Like, we only have this one name, Boris. Yes. By the way, it's not Boris at all, it's Boris. Yes, it's a Boris. Yeah. So, guys, if you find this kind of We film, don't have such name, Boris. No. If you find this kind of film, just for you know, the uh, direction of this movie or some uh, kind of... Uh, the writer of this movie, he just bought the new Maybach or Lamborghini because he saved money in a budget of film and he just want to use it with a Google Translate or, I don't know, some really strange guy that look like a uh, talking Russian, but he, he doesn't. There are actually many mistakes like this in some American movies or in other international movies where there are the, where there is the Cyrillic alphabet, for example, there, there is one movie with Leonardo DiCaprio, and he shows his passports, and he plays a Russian, I think, and there is just letters, just uh, many consonant, consonants which don't make sense in Russian. It's like... And it's, it looks just hilarious. Yeah. I think that the director really spent... Uh, the money on himself and saved. Yeah, like that. <laughs> uh, yeah. There are some Russian letters yeah. which don't make sense in Russian, and he's showing a passport, and there is some serious moment in the movie, and he's like, here's my passport. And then <laughs> when you put it on the pause, and like, oh, there, it's in Russian. And then it's like, it doesn't make any sense. And there are many mistakes like this in different movies. By the way, have you watched many movies where you saw Russians and how usually were they represented because usually they are these bad guys. I remember watching a horror movie and there was this crazy girl, I think it's Dita Tmui, it's like Child of the Darkness, something like this, and she was, <laughs> <laughs> she was like super crazy girl who killed, she was a teenager, like 15 years old, and she killed all her family because she fell in love with her stepdad, so she killed his wife, she killed his children, but then when she realized that he doesn't love her, she, she decided to kill him, and then, so I watched this movie, and in the end, everyone finds out that this girl... From Dostoevsky? That this girl is Natasha, who was adopted from Russia, of Natasha course. Natasha from Russia. I was like, really? of course she's from Russia. Of yes. Who can kill everybody? <laughs> and just not. So, Russians in the movies are always so stereotyped. They're always these bad guys. And, oh no, we're gonna change the camera. Just a moment, guys. Just a little moment here, please. Because it's a bit crazy here with the cameras. Uh, now it's gonna be like this. <laughs> Not, a <re> <laughs> Not a really good quality, but... Anyways, we've got to finish this live stream. Yeah. So, because of these stereotypes and Russians being represented like this in the movies or maybe in some comedy shows, when we go abroad, some people usually have these stereotypes against Russians. So, it's really not cool. Yeah. So just um, for like quick thing, for example, I've been living in Brazil, so now there's really popular guy that called Vitas, he's singer, and my grandmother used to listen to him, but it was like 30 years ago, and now he just became popular there. So sometimes you need to remember that time and fashion is coming really slow, so something that you know about Russia maybe was 
20 years ago. So every time update your information, okay, and just be uh, sure that you use a uh, good resource about this. So let's read the comments yeah. now and answer some of your comments. Okay. Uh, yeah, Russians are always demonized in movies. Are they demonized in the American movies or also in other movies? By the way, I think that in Russian movies, Germans are sometimes demonized over. What do you think? Yeah, I believe so. So okay. this is probably the problem for many <laughs> nations, let's say so. It, it, it's just really popular to yeah, have the really strong uh, Russian mafia. And it's like this. What else? Now the US is communist and Russia isn't. Um, why the US is recognized as one of the best countries for entrepreneurship and many Russians like the, their dream is to move to the US sometimes of course it's a dream in these pink glasses where they think that they move to the US and their life becomes just marvelous and they are entrepreneurs and they just count money and spend money. Dollars, yeah. Uh, yeah. A, a lot of people believe that like Russian hate Americans because we are always uh, like competitors between uh, each other. But uh, if you will see in real life and you will ask, I don't know, like every third Russian person will talk that they would like to visit USA or live there. Even they will talk that they don't like or they uh, use some propaganda thing or something, but they will, they are definitely inside wanted to visit or just to live there or work there. So sometimes uh, what politics say, says, like the mass media, they're talking about the high society because they know what they're talking about and like normal people they're just so really curious how how is the life there how life here so it's not always like the right or to the left sometimes it's in the middle and it's good to have the both view of the situation by the way many people ask me how americans are viewed in russia and I even got some DMs or comments where people were asking me, will nothing bad happen to me if I come to Russia because I'm an American and I think that Russians don't like Americans. Is, gonna, is anything dangerous going to happen to me because of this? Of course not. This, like, not war, but opposition is only on the level of the politics, of course, between the US and Russia. And when we talk about normal, usual people, many Russians are curious about making Amer American friends. Many of them really like English, so they would be just happy to have an American friend to practice English with a native speaker. And as Alona mentioned, many Russians also would like to study in the US or go there for working. We have a really popular program here, Work and Travel, where Russians go to the U.S. for summer and work there as lifesavers or as waitress in McDonald's or somewhere. It's like low-paying jobs for Americans, but for Russians, when it's in dollars, it's quite a well-paid job. So we have this program, Work and Travel, where students go uh, for working there for several months. So people uh, on the like usual level, if we're not talking about the politics, they have nothing against, against the US. And on the opposite, they are really curious, interested in it. And in my video where I interviewed Russians, you probably see saw that many Russians have like positive view of Americans. And there are just several exceptions, usually elder people um, who think that there is no culture in the U.S., uh, that 
just because they're watching too much TV, I guess. Maybe. What else do they ask? Orphan. Yes, that movie is named Orphan. And in the end, uh, you find out that this girl is Natasha from <laughs> Russia. By the way, <laughs> there is this stereotype that all the guys are Boris, but we don't have such name Boris. We yeah, have. <laughs> I, don't, I don't have any friends. By the Boris. way, yeah. I, I, have have... Only, I have one. I have a small, uh, small nephew. And he watching the cartoon, and the name of cow there is a bull. <laughs> no, not cow. Uh, the bull. Bull's name is Boris, and he sings a song there. So he's in folklore. Yeah. So not in the mafia. Yeah, and that all the girls are Natasha's. Yeah, it's the story. And and that Natasha's are these girls of uh, non-responsible behavior that they're gonna make out with foreigners. And that, yeah, Russian girls are stereotyped for this, mm -hmm. that they're all Natasha's, let's say so. In Turkey, you say? Yeah, in Turkey, it's really popular. Why Turkey? Uh, because a, lo uh, mm -hmm. a lot of Russians go to mm -hmm. Turkey, uh, so they have like a the holiday romance, I believe. Uh, so most of the Turkish people will call Russian movie Natasha, but actually I've never been in Turkey, so I don't know. Is <laughs> Vietnam an alliance of Russia? Um, right. I would say that the relationship between Vietnam and Russia are really close, and you probably know that in Vietnam there was this socialist communism system, and there they have these communist flags, when I went there, I was like, is this Soviet Union or, or something like this? Um, overall, the relationships between these two countries are really great. And as for my experience, and I lived in Vietnam for almost a year, before the pandemic started, I worked there as a language teacher. Everyone really treated me so well and everyone there is interested about Russia so I was really glad that they have such positive view of Russia. Yes. Olga is also uh, really popular but when I was in Brazil I had a neighborhood and his dog was named Olga uh, so actually Olga not exists it's Olga <laughs> yeah and uh, <laughs> Olga is also really uh, really rare name now because um, every year we have uh, some fashion for the name so all this kind of names like Boris, Olga maybe it was uh, um, like popular in the past like maybe 30 years ago now it's uh, other name like Sophia maybe I don't know, Sophia Actually, now it's really popular to call uh, the children with really strange names. So yeah. And yeah. also now it's popular to use really old Russian names, mm -hmm. for example, Matvey. Alexina. Yes, Matryona, maybe. <laughs> yes, there is this new trend for these traditional names. By the way, do you think that Russian names are hard to pronounce? I think they are super easy, like Alena, Elena. Yes, Alena is. Really or nice. many friends call me Ellie. Or in Russian, it's Elia. But, but Alena, do you have a short name? No, no. A lot of people mix Elena and Alena, but both don't like it. A lot of people mix Elena and Elena as well. No. <laughs> <laughs> Tilly Tilly Bomb? What happened? Tilly, yeah, I don't know. I'm not a mother, you're a mother. I'm a mother. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thank you guys a lot for all your questions. And thanks to you, our stream was really interesting because you asked, uh, asked so many questions and it was really active. Thank you so much for taking part. I hope that you've learned more about the Soviet Union history, about Russia, 
before the dissolution of the Soviet Union and probably learned more um, how Russia changed. Probably you didn't know which republics were in the Soviet Union, so I hope that you've got a lot of useful information about that and also about the slang during the Soviet Union times, and I hope that you will not be using these stereotypical words like Alena was telling Nazdarovye, Gopniks, etc., which don't exist now. Sorry for break your heart. It's all the Lenin dead, KGB dead, and Gopnik dead. I'm so sorry, but I have to tell you ugly truth. Yeah, we have to tell you the truth only. Thank you again for being with us for almost two hours, right? Thank you so much, David. Oh, we didn't tell. Usually we would make a tree, uh, a live with Alena, me from Moscow or from anywhere. The last stream we made together, I was in Chechnya, in the Chechen Republic, and Alena from is from Smolensk. Yeah, it's, uh, Can you tell about your city a bit? Uh, my city. Uh, my city is like border of Belarusian, and there was born every time I post this. Uh, there was born the first space man, uh, Gagarin, Yuri Gagarin. He was born there. Uh, so all we always. I didn't know actually. Mm. Mm. It's always good for you. <laughs> <laughs> so we learn not we not teach you only you but learn from each other. So guys, thank you very much to be with us. Yes, and. Today we are making this stream together, actually, because tomorrow we are leaving to Murmansk. Yep. Already tomorrow! Yeah. This is going to be really exciting. Murmansk is in the very north of Russia. We are going to be visiting one of the most nor northernmost cities of the world. We also hope to swim in the Arctic Ocean. Yes, it's our plan. And please send for some stars for Aurora Borealis. Aurora Borealis. Yes, lights. it's the northern lights. We hope to see them as well. But it, of course, depends on your luck with the weather. But we really hope to... Yeah, and your stars. So guys, send... Thank send you so much, Roberto. Yes, and yeah, so we're going to Mormonsk tomorrow. I will be making a video there, and also one more member is actually going to join us in yeah. our trip. It will be interesting. Member. You actually, <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> yes, you actually know this girl, but I'm gonna keep this as an intrigue. Yeah, you can you can get some comments and maybe if someone yeah. oh, no, let's do it. If someone will get. Uh, who, Wait, we wanted to who, make the who, cards. Who no, we I, have the. Yes, but how? Uh, I have the emails. Remember, guys, yeah. on my community page. Can you bring the posts postcard now? Yeah. No. Uh -huh. No, we we will show there in community later. We make a picture. Do you have them now? Yes. Uh, no, no. Uh, <laughs> I have some in the. Living room. I'm gonna bring some. Okay, okay, so let me uh, talk uh, what will happen. Oh, God. Yes. I'm no. in. I, d I didn't know I would be so <laughs> I will close you. <laughs> Go! Okay, it's fine. <laughs> I just didn't want to throw my like super short. Uh, uh, it's we get more of you. Okay, so guys. Uh, wait, wait, wait. I wanna tell them. Uh, yes, I will just tell what will happen. She just will bring uh, some uh, surprise that we will gonna share with you. So uh, now we will tell you how it will be, uh, and everything you will know in a minute. She just will back there. So guys, let me know if it was useful for you. And uh, yes, and definitely we will ask you the question who will go with us. And так, I think I'm coming to the end of this. I don't know. Так, let's take here maybe some question. Mormonsk, my dream city. Really? Wow. A lot of Russian even don't know where is this place. <laughs> uh, yes, there is coal. I believe will be interesting. Naked swimming, I'm not sure. There's four degrees water Celsius. Uh, I love Russian people, it's good to know. I hope you are in shorts. 
We almost forgot about this. Yes, guys. Uh, in my community, I told you that we're going to make a surprise for those who fill out the form uh, through the link in my community. So let me just open it now. And we're going to see how many people took part. Just a moment. Yes, and uh, so and I will tell what will be. So here, this is chocolate, but yeah. So here will be the postcard from the heart, from the love, from Russia with love. <laughs> so this one is uh, like from winter, and this one from Moscow. And also we have one. It's like extra cool gift because here it's from Tretikov Gallery. It's like the Louvre of Russia. So here half of the Kremlin, and inside half chocolate. So here will be three gifts, gifted. Uh, we will uh, like make um, uh, like a lottery. Yeah, like a lottery. Uh, like between the all emails to you or have left during times that you fill the form so we will just take uh, the uh, random number yeah yes. a random number so we will uh, take the random wow, number 162 people yeah. filled out the form maybe we will create super cool slav squad <laughs> <laughs> i don't know one so now we have 160 well, how much one hundred sixty-two people. We have to show people. them. We can show them. The... Uh, I'm gonna send this to you to your phone now, and you will be showing it to the camera. Really? Yes, really. But for... oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. Let me check. So now we have one hundred. Uh, can you open it? Yeah. One hundred sixty-two people who took part in yes, our. Yes, who filled out the form in my community to take part. Yeah. To win this. Lovely prizes from Russia. Uh, and we will use the um, just a moment. Uh, we will also use the random random number generator. I can't open here. And we will choose three people. Can you send it? Okay. Is, is that it? Uh -huh. uh, yes, we will use the random random numbers generator and choose one of you. So, uh, I just want you to see everything. Here is the all the people who filled out the form. There are 162 people. Now Alena will open the random number generator and we will see who gets this gift. So, slot number one is this gift. Yeah. So we, we will write something here with Alena. Yeah. So we have. It's also from Tretikov Gallery, by the way. Yeah. Oh. Can be yes. until 100 only. Yeah, till 160. Oh, wait, no, no, there is so. There is a lot of people who filled what? out the form. Oh my gosh, there is 958. Wait, really? Let me check. I cannot believe that so many people. Are watching my my channel <laughs> and reading my posts on community. Wait, I, I'm just gonna check it again. Check. Um, here. Oh, so let's make a question. Yeah. I oh, know we will not make a question. We just uh, make a generation. Talk. Okay. So. Now we will just double check if it was yes, 900. Because, oh my god. Yeah, it's successful. Wow. 958. Yes. Oh, sorry. It was 958 people who filled out the form. Yeah. 
So good. So now wow. I have uh, this one um, random run, randomizer. Random number. Yeah. So we put 958, and we just take the one number. So and we will uh, find the number, and after this, read who who is winning. So the first this card goes to minuteчку. It's 400. We like <laughs> bingo. <laughs> bingo. Four four eight. Four hundred forty-eight. Yeah, you can make a screenshot maybe. It's Hadden or Jaden. Jaden. Yes, you can see here. Four hundred forty-eight. It's Jaden, and I will make a screenshot of his email. Yeah, so it starts. Let's text or start. He doesn't have an email. You don't have a mail. Ooh, sorry, sorry. Jaden. It was miss another so sa seven five six I move like bingo bingo <laughs> seven five six so make a screenshot here let's check uh, seven five six is Zach 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 yeah and what is his uh, the beginning of his I will make a screenshot of his email yes he has an email yeah so oh he uh -huh. so it's no I think he wouldn't sooner. want uh, people to know. No, no, but we will only begin. Se Sumer. Se Sumer. Se Sumer. Se Sumer. Se Sumer. Okay, this card goes to Zach. Ah, Zach. Let's put Zach. Dear Zach. Yeah. Let's put it here. Dear Zach. Right now, we just yeah. put here. Dear <laughs> Zach. So, dear Zach, here he is. The number one. So, second. Let's put my. Uh, it's 50. I don't know. It's, you just push here the oh, here's research, uh, <laughs> announcement. So here you just randomize some number. So the second. So here you can see number 50. And it's Carlo Ca John Carlo Capuna. Yes, he has an email. Everything looks good. Capuna. John Carlo Capuna. <laughs> wow. It's something from Italian mafia. And the last one. Uh, with the chocolate. It's chocolate. Yes, yeah, from special color. Yeah, and okay. it also has really like, beautiful yeah. package. Yeah, so it was 240. Bingo, 240. Uh, let's check who was. 240, you can see. It's at, at Winter's Twill. At Winter's Twill? Yeah. 240. So you got chocolate from Russia. Good luck. Yes. Uh, we will be sending out everything. Yeah, so uh, the Russian post woman will so, work. Uh, thank you. <coughs> Wait, uh, I'm going to open the chat now. Yeah, let's check. Oh my gosh, thank you so much, David, for contributing to our trip to Mormonsk. Yeah, and thank you. Uh, the chat, it's not the chat to win the lottery. So before, on my community page, I left the link where everyone could fill out the form with their email if they would like to take part in this lottery and get some gifts from Russia. And I made an Excel uh, like chart out of these emails. So every email has got a number. For example, number one, Zach. Number two, um, who was the John, John. etc. And then we had a random number like app where we chose three people out of almost 1,000 who 1, 000, yeah. took part. So That's really like cool. So uh, we guys are gonna send these gifts. Thank you again a lot for being here. Yeah, and let's make one more uh, <laughs> guessing uh, who who goes. Oh ah, yes, yeah. yes. Tomorrow, Alena and I are going to Murmansk with a blogger. Blogger, yeah, she's girl. From, we'll talk from where she's. No, yeah. no, no, no. That that's gonna become evident if we say. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to Murmansk with another YouTuber. She also makes videos about Russia. 
What else can we say? Mm. She's a brunette. You can see. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she, she is a brunette. So you can guess in the Can you try to guess who is going to Murmansk with us? Yeah, just guess there. And we will send uh, some special card, like gift card from the North yes. North City of Russia. Yeah, actually they have craft beer from North. Okay. Uh, you have to name just one person. Yeah, one person. Thank you so much, Roberto. It's not bold, sorry, it uh, was a girl. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because everybody is just a fan of that guy. No, this girl is not bold. <laughs> like, <laughs> Because there is gold to be bold. Thank you so much, Commando. Crossfire? What is Crossfire? It's not, like they are... That's not Natasha. Seems like everyone only knows one name in <laughs> Russian, like Natasha, Natasha. No, she, we were she's just, not Russian. Yes, we were just Russian. saying that Natasha is such a stereotypical name, and now... Yeah, she she's not Russian. I think it's hard. Maybe uh, give them... Uh... Someone said Kat Sullivan. Opa. Wait, is he the Anna first? Marie Rabova. Wait, Kat, Kat. Um, Kat, da, Kat. Wait. <gasps> Oh, oh. They know everything about you. <laughs> Wait, who was the first to say cat? We will find it. No, cat. It looks like Liam Tulan. Liam Tulan. Liam Tulan. Liam Tulan. <gasps> Liam. I leave me a message, like a di direct message on Instagram with your address. And we're going to send you a gift card from Murmansk. Yeah, from North North. Because every, you get... Everybody will DM you what to do. No, yeah? I will only answer to Liam Tulan. Yeah, Liam Tulan. <laughs> yeah. Yes, it's going to be Kat, yes. your guest. Uh, I don't know her yet. <clears throat> so maybe that will be an interesting uh, travel for us and for her, I believe. Uh, because she's foreign, that go to North, you should be kind of brave. Yeah. Even I... <laughs> I yeah. think I think just the most warm clothes and Lina spoke to me like oh, why are you Yeah, we're the craziest to travelers because when we say that we want to go to the sea the beach. Yeah, to the beach <laughs> we go to the Arctic Ocean yeah. to swim there. Yeah. Probably we're gonna catch some sea urchins. Yeah. Yes, and try it. Okay. Всем пока. Всем пока. Товарищи. Да. Всем добра. <laughs> Всем добра. Всего Всем хорошего. And in order to understand that, you can come to our speaking club. We're yeah. going to be waiting for 